Okay, let's go right into this meeting. Uh, other fellows, we, we're going to talk about computer vision for the tractor, so you can feel free to listen to us, but we got to do this right now. So, yeah, Salam, so, so tell me more about your thoughts. So, so the update for what we've talked about so far is we've talked about simply adding computer vision, recognition of markers on a field, so, so our light, the micro track can go on a field with solar power. So it would ha we would have, for example, the use case of solar panel, small power cube, a controller that has solenoids on it, and the solenoids would, would drive the, the tracks, the one side or the other tracks, so you can go forward, backward, and turn, and so forth. But, but there's logic to that, so it would be a Raspberry Pi that's got computer vision that's actually recognizing markers on the field so you can pre either pre-program uh, or even, um, well, ideally you would want to also have like pre predetermined paths or both combination of predetermined paths and visual feedback of the path. So, but maybe you can fill me in more on what, what you're thinking and what the possibilities, what your skill set would allow you to do at present. Okay, awesome. So, uh, in regards to this project, uh, I've read the specifications that you gave me. The one thing that I was lacking was the, uh, the size of the tractor itself. So, what yeah. are the size uh, of uh, the whole tractor and what are the size of the treads of the tractor so that uh, I can get the, a sense of uh, what what the marker size would be and how long how, how long would it take it to move from one end to the other? What yeah. The speed of that thing. Right. Yeah. The track, the micro track right now is 41 inches wide, and it's it's about 52 inches long. That's the current size, and it's about 38 inches high. So 41 by 52. Yeah, I got that. I got that. By the 38. Is that I'm not yet very fast in turning inches and centimeters, and we use the metric thing over here. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get this. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's more or less a meter. Yeah. It's yeah, about a meter. Like a meter cube. If, if, if you want to get a rough estimation of that one. Yeah. So uh, basically, yes, this is smaller than uh, what I assumed. So the accuracy of that thing can get better uh, if, if, if we get a smaller size. So basically, we're we're talking about a differential drive tractor, right? So each side yes. will be driven uh, independently, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So this will make it very easy for the turning part. So we can do the turning very accurately with the gyroscope uh, built in with the Z-axis gyroscope over the tractor. And uh, we can make it uh, follow a certain trajectory with, uh, with that marker being on the ground. So it shouldn't be a big, uh, a big issue to, to, find that, uh, to find that line, especially if we get it to be uh, of uh, a weird color. So that will be uh, a function or a library, let's say, which was already implemented the OpenCV. So we can just take it out of, uh, uh, of the internet and just plug it into the Raspberry Pi and it will work like a charm. So it's, it's nothing of a huge code that we need to do over there if we just need to identify a single, uh, I don't know, straight line. If, if, I'm not, if I'm understanding this correctly, what you mean by a marker is like uh, a straight line on the ground, marking that this is where the real uh, anything of this marker is the wheel that we need to take off. Is that true? Um, yeah, there's different ways to do that. So let's actually start a document for how what would be the best strategy to do it. One is stakes that are put in every three meters or so, say PVC stakes that are in a long line of maybe so like a, every, every three meters or every five meters and the rows would be say about a hundred meters or so and then the field so let's let's actually document it and talk about what would be the best strategy f to enable an easy way to to do accurate motion here so okay. so yes 
basically, if, if we had a marker which is placed every five meters and we had the robot moving into that one, uh, basically, uh, the camera over the robot will be seeing a perspective of the map, so it will be seeing uh, the, uh, the shape of the pole distorted. Uh, mm -hmm. We would have a calibration pole at, at the, or a calibration marker at the beginning of the field, mm -hmm. which uh, the tractor can look at and then we can uh, calibrate itself based on it so that it can understand that uh, it knows the height uh, and the diameter of the pole and then it can see it in perspective and adjust itself to it, make sure that it is doing the mapping in the right way. Uh, now, if we're looking at, at uh, the combination that you talked about, that we need to have a predetermined path uh, and uh, a combination of a predetermined path and, uh, let's say, a navigation uh, part of it, uh, what I believe is, yes, it should have uh, a rough estimation of where these uh, markers should be and then it would be verifying those coordinates as it is moving. So uh, then it would be uh, trying to match the accuracy of the map that it has in mind with the actual map which is present on ground. Uh, this thing is called Fidelity in, in computer vision. What is, so called, what is that called? Fidelity. Fidelity? Yes. Okay. Uh, this would be determined by uh, how accurate the mapping is, uh, the, the real-time mapping is, uh, based on the map that they have, that uh, the robot has in mind. Uh, with computer vision, as I told you, we'll be using uh, OpenCV, which is uh, an uh, open source computer vision library, which is available online. Uh, Highly, de highly developed, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at least it has been out there for 10 years, if yeah. not more. Uh, it started with C++, but it's uh, getting a huge speed in Python. Uh, Python is mainly the preferable language for uh, Raspberry Pi and for myself uh, yeah. in general. Uh, so I believe that I'm going to be picking the libraries that, uh, of, of the CD that are in Python uh, for this project. And we should have uh, pretty decent functions or libraries uh, that can suit our application. Uh, as, as you said, one of the mechanisms uh, to take out the weed is just move over them with the threads and the weight of uh, the mini tractor should kill these things. I don't know how effective that will be, you know, better because you went into the uh, functionality of uh, the tractor. But yeah, if that works, uh, that will be great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, take. Please click on the document that I shared there, the presentation template. Yeah. Just. So I think the prototype field that we have available for testing is a hundred meters by twenty meters. So it's long long field and it would turn around say at the ends um, but there's different ways to go about it so one way is is the markers and others other ways could be even things like you pull a string or wire across long distances but maybe you can tell me more would the markers be acceptable like every five five meters or even ten meters Reach that so I pressed I pressed press open on, close share document on the side of the meeting. Yeah. And what happens and, there? Uh welcome to either pad. The pad is synchronized. No, no, no. Synchronized. Okay. That's that's the only thing that I'm seeing. That's okay, if you go to the chat box, click on the last link that I put in there. It's a Google Google Doc. Okay, let's see Sorry if I... That. You're not able to open the chat box. It's a button on the left-hand side, the thing that looks like a window on the left-hand side. 
Uh, can you look at my screen? I was asking for the Quranic name, so let me just try to name that. Yeah. If you want to look at my screen, it's a um, thing on the left. Awesome. So I'm there. I clicked on I clicked over the file and I'm in OpenCV tracker uh, mission strat motion strategy. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So I'm in. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. It looks like you're in there. So yeah, OpenCV tractor motion strategy. So yeah. tell me more. How would we do that? What's a preferable route for it make it making it easy? So say there's there's little markers. Yeah, uh, I was thinking that uh, if you have the markers like as poles just digged in the ground, uh, then the tractor won't be able to navigate over them. It needs, it needs to go around them. Uh huh. So it's 100 meter by 20 meter, but uh, the uh, the good plants are every how many meters of uh, the rows are uh, what's the distance between two rows? Yeah, so the distance between two rows would be there's two ways. One is if the tractor is straddling the plants, so so it could be every two feet. So one option is every two feet, or you can make it that it's every four feet if the tractor is going in between the rows. But I'm thinking. Uh, if we could get the accurate accuracy, it should just be going over the plants. Um, so. So we're we're targeting that we're targeting very uh, young or very early stages of the plants, right? Yes. Yeah, so we'd be talking about going over the plants until they're maybe like half a meter tall. We can make the tractor half like. A meter, so, uh, and in the design of the tractor, we have a clearance of half a meter from the middle. We could make it such that, yeah, it's kind of raised, raised up. Uh, but, I mean, we don't have to worry about that yet. Let's just say that we've got the basically the initial establishment phase where the plants are just sprouting, and that's when you need to do all the weeding. And then after some time, potentially even, this tractor spreads out straw. Like, yeah, I'm seeing that initially the the weeding happens by the tractor going bare, over bare ground, but the other strategy is also that, that we could either spread straw or have the tractor autonomously spread straw, like right in its tracks, right behind its tracks. A after it, say, after it um, goes over and does the weeding, we can add a functionality where it's mashing up a, a hay bale and it's putting that straw right in its in its on its tracks i mean that's more advanced i mean we, we don't have to talk about that yet but but the sim simplest thing is that it's going through the rows and it's got either its tracks or a little little implement basically like a little cultivator that's hitting right uh, by behind the tracks so it could be both the tracks and a tiny cultivator behind the tracks so in detail let's 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 okay. draw that so the tractor would be like this so so tractor it's got the tracks and the body of the tractor so that's how the tractor looks um, and the rows the rows of plants are like this So the plants are growing like this, and the, and the tractor could be straddling them in one case, uh, if they're about two feet apart. Or the other case is, uh, so that's it's case one. Case two is where you have them uh, just like that, except every other. Yeah. Uh, away from each other. Yeah, about that. Here it would be like, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, specifically, if the tractor width, if that it's is. 41. 
one. So yeah. I'm assuming that it's not totally uh, double. Uh, sorry, it's not totally the same. It's a bit uh, smaller. Yeah. So it's around 30 to 35 uh, yeah. inches wide. And in the second scenario, I'm assuming that it's going to be 50 to 55. Something like that. Yep. No, it's fine. So uh, here it's about 34, three quarter meter. And here would be about a meter, meter point five, 1.5 meter. The first is preferable, the second one would probably be probably be more easy. Um, but more easy in what sense? Uh, it seems like just a technical challenge because you've got, you don't have to worry about the spacing between um, between the tracks can be a little larger here. Like we can make these as wide as needed so that we know the tractor will not hit them. So one thing, what I believe is that the first configuration, which is more dense, which is preferable on our end, is also easier to implement. It is? Okay. Yes, uh, because, because if we allow for like half a meter or a bit lower uh, underneath the tractor, uh, then we can just make sure that, that uh, the camera is seeing the poles or, or the markers uh, at the center of the tractor and right. moving straight ahead. But having the markers over the side of the track will be an issue. Right. Uh, because then we have to adjust all the angles, and then in one view, in one uh, in one picture, we may be seeing uh, two points from two angles, and we have to deal now with segmenting the image and making sure that we're following either the right or the left, or centering the, uh, the tracker based on the right and the left. So it would mean more processing. Okay. How heavy is the processing? Is it take time or is it pretty quick with the... Uh, should, not, should not take a lot of time. Should not. Like the response is what, like a half a second or something? Like to to get oriented or tenth of a second? Or? I can get back to you. I can, I can get back to you with that one. I didn't implement over Raspberry Pi uh, while measuring the response time. I have to work over... Uh, a regular PC and it has been implemented over cloud services and the response was also fast. So I doubt that it will take uh, some time that it would bother us, especially that uh, if we're looking at poles every 5 meters or every 3 meters, I don't know. Okay. Uh, it should be fine. It should be fine. Okay. And when it... So, so how are is the turning addressed? space on both ends of the field, but looking at a field which is 100 meters, so losing like uh, a meter uh, on each uh, on each side will be a division, I believe. Okay, so then let's the put it, turning, yeah. slide number two, um, so space at both ends. So let's take a look at case one. And you're you're also able to edit this document if if you let's see it's um 
let me see no you can't advanced anyone can can edit this document so you can edit this document you can do things there so basically you're going and at the end yes so here we're going like this and then we're going like that and we actually would be going into this this one here the second over Saying it should go there. Yes. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's the way it should go because uh, in this way you would be uh, reading two rows uh, at the same point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um. Hardware. Uh, can you send me a link to the the camera? What is it that we want to use? Sorry. Can you send, can a, send a link you, to uh, the computer uh, camera? A link? Yeah. Uh, I'm not getting the last one. Okay. Yeah. Can you? Link to the to the camera to the hardware. Yeah. The last five okay. So uh, as as a prototype, we're gonna start with the uh, Raspberry Pi three. And uh, we'll see uh, if we can just move to the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, zero is the first one? No, Zero is a new one, but it's a $1 uh, computer, so it's much cheaper. Uh -huh. It may be a bit slower, uh, but uh, let's see uh, what, what level of processing would be needed and how can uh, both, uh, let's say, platforms deal with this thing. Yep. Thirty-five dollars for a Raspberry Pi, three. Yeah. Uh, basically, I can only view this document if I can understand because it says only view. You can only view this. Um. Really. Just ask the owner to get access. Anyone on the internet can. Can you just refresh? Okay, Raspberry Pi Zero is like ten dollars less or something, or not as far as I know. What I know is that it's way less, not just ten dollars less. I don't know if things has changed since the last time that I've seen them, but what I know is that it can go down to a five dollars thing. Oh, yeah. And zero is written with that it's like ERO. It's yep. really expressed as the number zero. Five dollars that'll be for cheap clones? Or is that like the actual five official? For what, sorry? The five dollars or six dollars would be for clones or the original Raspberry Pi Zero? Okay. Camera ready. To be very, very yeah, wow. Yeah, it's only like fifteen dollars on eBay here. 
That's great. And you can put smaller, uh, the smaller controllers that can go down to uh, 1.3 dollars and all of these things, 3 dollars, but they won't be as reliable as uh, Raspberry Pi. Okay. The Raspberry Pi 3 has a huge amount of processing that, uh, or at least a huge, a huge amount of input output that we don't really need for our application. Uh, unless we're going to drive the, just most of the logic uh, of, of the track, everything uh, from the mechanisms that would we to the mechanisms that would do future uh, applications of the tractor with the Raspberry Pi, then it would be of a, bit, uh, a bit of a use. Plus, communicate with the base uh, to update the place of the tractor for, uh, for, for $35 again. Yep, so I put a link to the solenoid. Can you put a link to the camera? Yes, sure. Okay, um, camera module. Element 14. Yeah, the price of the control is just Ok, 
Can you take a look at the Amazon link that I put in there? Is that would that work? Five megapixels. Yeah, yeah. I mean, does this does this get you something comparable to smartphone quality pictures? Uh, smartphones, current smartphones that we have in hand uh, are between eight and twelve on average, so far just lower than that. Uh huh. But it should be good when you take the grayscale of that, so that you can just identify an alt color in an image. Yeah. So I believe five megapixels. Would that one work? It should be. Should be. Okay. And the connectors on them are they all the same? As far as the the cord, the plug-in. What's the plug-in like? Basically, that is the same for all Raspberry Pis, but they didn't mention anything about Raspberry Pi Zero. So I don't know if we need to switch down to, to uh, any other camera if we're moving to the zero version. Oh, I see. The one you linked. The one that you linked to works with the zero as well. The one that I link, that I placed the link for, is the default one. So let me just double check that. Yeah, I don't see a difference in how they look. Might be yeah, the same yeah, thing. Are you in the Vex Robotics program? You working with yes. with those guys? Yep. That's is that um let's see is that what what do you do for a living right now? Is that what you're doing the Vex program? Uh basically I've been doing multiple things throughout the summer uh, for a living. So yes, I worked with Vex uh, and I did some uh, freelancing projects uh, in my area. And uh, I teach uh, at the university. I used to give uh, a tutorial over robotics. And starting this fall, I'm going to teach a course on uh, mobile robots. Very nice. Yeah, I was uh, admitted into a PhD program, but uh, I think that I'm not going to go with that. Good job. Yeah. We make robots take care of these uh, aquariums, make sure that uh, all the chemicals are uh, chemicals and all the uh, probe-based uh, quantities are okay, like the temperature, the uh, pH, so on and so forth. Yeah. Excellent. Um, regarding the the turning have you looked at the relay and solenoids i'm talking about regarding the turning sorry yeah no uh, back to the slide number two have you clicked on the link to the solenoids and the relay uh, not yet, not yet. i'm still checking the camera that can work with the zero 
Ajá. Okay. Because um, I'm gonna give you this. Link. I'm gonna put it in the chat box so that you can check before we paste it over there. I just posted it in the chat box. Mm -hmm. This includes part zero. Okay. So it I looks like the, our camera can plug into these things. Excellent, yeah. And they say that this one is an 8 megapixel camera, which is really comparable to the cameras that I have at the my Nexus. <laughs> yeah. So there, the one you'd link to, that's they actually are selling a kit for making your own little camera. Well, that is really nice. That's that's actually that's great, huh? That's nice. We could use. I mean, I th we we take a lot of different documentation around here. So to have a low cost, replaceable camera would actually be a really good thing for us like here we'd love to set up what they're showing there with for just time-lapse photography that we do a lot of might actually look into doing that also okay yeah. excellent especially with, the, uh, especially with the ability of the price here to take uh, SD cards off to huge quantities uh, oh wow huge capacities. yeah so you can put uh, like 128 uh, gigabytes of uh, storage over there and try to get whatever yeah, that's that actually, you know, like we, we have a revenue model of hosting workshops. I mean, that would actually be a great build workshop for a 3D printed item. You know, say we run a 3D printer workshop, we can say, okay, and we're going to make a 3D printed camera on the second day. That's, I really like that. Okay, excellent. Um, so now I'm going for the solid on the part. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I've heard a lot about the color cube, but I haven't found any, uh, at least where I search, uh, a formal definition of what's, what, what is this color cube, or what is the word, the idea of the color cube, cube that you from. Right, okay. So. Let's get you the information on that. So let the, the information there is uh, now since you have um, ah I'll send you the file. Yeah, um, you you're comfortable opening up things in FreeCAD, right? Since you passed the test, so I'm just going to point you yeah. to the link to the file itself. Um, Although I can't do it right now because I'm over Windows now. I didn't launch it from the Linux port. Okay. Do you run Linux on a separate computer or, or no, on a I'm USB? No, on a computer over a uh, virtual machine. Okay. Virtual machine, yeah. I mean, we're supposed to be d running it off a, of a USB because it's. I think it's slower on the virtual machine. Yeah, it's slower on the uh, virtual machine, but I told you that I wasted like two USBs uh, over that because I was trying it from my Mac. Uh, yet I got another USB, and I'm uh, willing to do it from my PC, from my computer uh, to see if that will work.
So the solenoids show us hundred twenty eight hundred fifty dollars on my own. So yeah. is there a discrepancy in the price? Of yeah, because we need four of those. So more like five hundred dollars if we want to do full yeah, track. Five twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, five twenty. So we can change that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna. That's gonna be the big big cost. Uh, for just the tracks, we can do just two of those. Well, that's that's the big power cube, but that big power cube is the gasoline version. The other part is we will we can switch. We will have a secondary power cube with just a solar panel on top of that. So solar power cube that's not built yet. Solar power cube. So we don't have much on the solar power cube. But what what we can do is those solenoids can drive the output of that 16 horsepower power cube, 10 gallons per minute. They can also drive the very tiny, very small flow out of just like a 200 watt solar panel. 200 or 300 watt solar panel. So it'll be going very, very slowly in the daytime. Like the expected rate, uh, we did a one kilowatt power cube before and it gave us, so the, so the so expected speed there is let me just give you some numbers there. We did, and let's translate that to meters per second and stuff, or kilometers per hour. So 14 feet per minute at one kilowatt. We expect uh, one fifth of that, which is, let's say, two feet per minute at 200 watts which means over a day the the important part is how much do we travel in a given day how much can we weed in a given day and we expect let's say six hours of full sun so let's say um, We've got 60 minutes times 6 hours, 360 minutes times 2 feet per minute, 
would get us 720 feet per day. Or like 250 meters per day. So it's like 250 meters per day. So about two rows per day. If there are 100 meter rows. So this is the field initially is 100 times 100 meters by 20 meters. Two rows like that means that in a week, well, it's really four rows. So in a week, let's say this thing goes constantly 24, you know, every time the sun shines and you need to weed about every week to two weeks in the intensive weeding period. So let's say we weed every week. Per week we can travel about a kilometer or two kilometers. Seven times, you know, 1.5 kilometers. Seven times 250 is... 1750, kilo, 1750 meters, let's say. So that would be 17 row passes. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, 17 times back and forth, and every time you're getting two rows, so you can have 34 rows. Or 34 row weekly weeding capacity. which is which translates about to an acre or two acres about a hectare which would be excellent if that is done on totally on solar power autonomous does that make sense okay so yeah yeah and i see that uh, the calculations are a bit on the passing support so we can do much better with that oh yeah calculations because it's around 2.8 uh, feet per minute uh, yeah which, which can get us into 300, yeah. uh, 330 meters per day, which is yep, yep. A, good, uh, a good 30% income. Yeah, in the current spacing that we have, 34 rows is about, uh, if they're three-quarter meter rows, It's about 25 meters. Um, yep. So we're looking at around 25 rows, right? I'll say it again. We're looking at 25 rows, right? 25 rows of plants. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, 25 rows? Yes, so uh, 25 rows of, of, uh, of plants, right? Because in, in around uh, 20 meters width? Yes, yes, per day, yes, 25... No, no, no. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So, so for twenty meters, we get around twenty-five, uh, twenty-five rows of plants. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And let's assume we're going into thirteen, uh, because he's passing two rows per uh, go. So thirteen, and let's say that we're going for a hundred. So it's around 1,300 meters. So with 1,300 meters, uh, the full field should be long, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. No? It's a, about those numbers. I mean, we... Uh, so, so, so it can do it in less 
Yes. You can do it in like five days. Right. That's awesome. Okay. And later on, if, if pressing the wheel, the wheels with the uh, with the cat didn't work, we can just put uh, any kind of cutter at the uh, at the front side of the, the treads and we can cut anything out of the ground. Yeah. There is an autonomous wheeler which came out. Uh, I believe a couple of months ago, it's, it's a very small one that uses this technology. Yeah, yeah, the little robotic weeder. Yes, exactly. The yeah. One that has the uh, cutter. In the middle of it that cuts the beans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're much bigger than that, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I can put something like that <laughs> yeah. uh, with multiple weeds uh, on both sides of the threads in front of them. Yes. And they can just. Yeah, I mean, because this tractor uh, has 7,000 pounds of pull, <laughs> 7,000, we can put extender implements, if, if needed, we can actually double this speed because we can put cultivators behind the tractor and even spanning to the rows to the side so we can do four rows at a time. I mean, we have plenty of pull, so we don't have to worry oh, about that yeah. yet. We'll we'll optimize this later, but for now, let's just do this very simple right behind it. No big deal. That's the proof of concept here. This is great. Yeah, I think this is going to be a great application. Awesome. So what else do you need to know on the uh, computer vision part? Okay, so... So right now we're going to do the simple idea of seeing the row of plants that are in front of us and like actually recognizing the plants. Is there going to be actual like recognition of like image recognition? Uh, we're going to try to do image recognition, but not of the plants, but of the uh, markers of the poles. Okay, so the poles. Okay, let's talk about the poles. So are we talking about every 10 meters we've got poles? Like little... Or 10 meters, I believe it would be a bit too much. Yeah, a bit too much. Okay, but little posts that the tractor goes over? Yes, yes. Little markers. Okay. Uh, white ones, white ones would be good because that would be very easy to accept it. But... Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be very easy. So we can just basically cut little. So how many meters? Like every two meters or three meters? Okay. So, so there will have to be about 25 markers or so, if it's 25, if it's four. Yeah, more or less. So 25 by 25, we're talking about like a number of markers. Per yeah, that's that's good. I mean, setting that up is only one time, so yeah, not bad. Yeah. And hopefully the rain will keep them clean, <laughs> so that uh, we can have a good recognition. Yeah, excellent. So now tell me more about so so um, so then the strategy is marker every four meters. Machine straddles markers. Yeah, uh, let me let me just second. let me see if I can pull out uh, the project that I worked over the vision. that I have the records on. But the markers have to be every other row, that's fine.
yeah I mean this this would be a super easy way to do it now let's talk briefly about and maybe we should just restrict ourselves to that as a minimum viable product for now and definitely I mean that's what we want to start with but how much more difficult is it if you have posts like say every so so the machine is actually looking straight ahead onto the field and there's posts let's say every 15 meters or so or 10 meters like a grid of um, posts that are to the side of the machine how, how much more difficult is that in terms of the computer algorithms to detect the precise position Yeah. By post, by post every 15 meters, so we're just making the, the, the markers more sparse, no? Yes. And it's not straddling them. It's They're to the side. They're taller. So basically, they're, say, permanent tall posts, which are tall means one or two meters, say 1.5 meter tall. Okay. And they're in the ground, and they're every, say, 15... Uh, every say 10 meters or 5 meter yeah 10 meters let's say because then you're looking not straddling the the row but you're looking to the side you're looking Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just clicked on the paper that Michelle linked. Oh, look, yeah, take a look at that paper. See the link in the chat box? Yeah, and it's um, yeah, a little different strategy because there they're actually detecting weeds. Here, we're detecting markers, which is simpler. So we're using vision for way much, way much simpler. Right? So the thing that we're doing is just merely uh, trying to understand colors and uh, counting pixels. Uh, and the thing that uh, he's doing, we're getting into machine learning in which we need to get patterns of plants, uh, uh, training a classifier on how to detect uh, certain parts of plants, and then again we have an 
uh, a range of error for this classifier in the taking out good and so we have uh, false positives uh, and we have uh, false negatives. Uh, yeah. Yeah, different, little different, more complicated than what we're doing. Yeah, we're I was just looking uh, what research was uh, already done and uh, yeah. on the subject. Yeah, paste yeah, that into... Yeah, so... to start with recognition points. A good place to start. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a good place to start. Yeah. So please, uh, Michelle, when you do the, if you find any other papers, post them on page three there. Yep. Okay. I have a paper, it's a bit old, uh, that was still on my computer, it's from 2009, but uh, it's, uh, it breaks down the, the whole uh, process, like uh, from uh, role recognition to the robotics to positioning and it looks into the uh, different aspects maybe it's interesting too yeah definitely definitely can you uh, link that uh, you can upload it to the wiki or something yeah, if you want I can upload it uh, I can send it through mail maybe just upload it to the wiki if it's a nice paper okay it's yeah. PDF whatever um, uh, on what page uh, where should I put the link? Well, I clearly on the open source um, robotic tractor. Yeah, uh, uh. <laughs> Let's just start yeah, that. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on. I'm gonna put all these documents. I'm gonna start a a page on the wiki. If you look at my screen. Uh, yeah, you can see my screen. I'm just gonna go open source robotic tractor. Weeding tra tr weeding tractor. Well, it's going to be more than weeding, so it's, it's called Open Source Robotic Tractor. And I'll embed this document that we are working on right now in there. Uh, where were you working? Uh, just go to my log. Okay. So, Salam, so then uh, as far as the accuracy, positioning accuracy of the tractor itself, so we can get 3 inch or like 7.5 centimeter that it wouldn't sway off the course, like plus, what's the, what's the maximum resolution that we could get for the motion of the tractor? Right, so right. So it's, it's, not, it's not that uh, it's only dependent over the sensors and the calculations. It's highly dependent over the actuators themselves. Plus, uh, looking at a one meter tractor with like, I don't know, half a meter, 40 centimeters uh, clearance in the middle of it. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit Confused, not not really confused, but I'm a bit uh, uh, I lost I lost the verb over here. So uh, I'm wondering why why would we need the three inch uh, accuracy? Well, so so the idea is the concept here is you're the tracks are driving or whatever implement is drawn behind the tracks and it wants to be as close to the plant as possible without killing the plant. So what is that acceptable distance? The acceptable distance would be 
I mean, at best, it's like one inch from the plant, but that's like too close. I would say two inches or three inches where you're certain that you're not going to accidentally hit plants. Oh, so you, you need to read everything yes. uh, out, of the, out of the way uh, with a clearance of three inches from the plant. Yes. So that's, that's going to affect uh, the way you design your, the treads of the tractor. Right, but the point is that, yeah, so say you put the rows, right, I mean it's, yes, let's say we got the treads of the tractor, um, but mo more likely it's we're actually pulling a little uh, little weeding implement behind the tracks, unless, because then we're just limited by the geometry of the tracks for the row spacing. So, what we probably want to do is just have a little implement behind the tractor, which is being pulled, and that implement just leaves the space for um, the row in the middle, and it and it straddles that with three inches on each side, so it's a six inch gap in the middle, and then it gets to three inches of the plants on the, on the other two rows, and it clears everything in its way. So that three inches adjusts for like say there's uneven terrain and whatever that the tractor does not shake around that it actually hits plants accidentally because I think the control itself it's going to be very clear um, as far as steering because it's going to be moving very slowly at least on solar operation. So the res I mean it's we're not going to have any problems controlling it. The question is just the stability in general of the tractor. Like, if there's uneven terrain, it can't wobble and say that the weeder hits the actual plants. So we have to experiment with that. But the idea is, I guess on the motion side, uh, assume we've got perfect drive. That means we can turn one wheel or the other. I mean, there are no limits there. I mean, the theoretical limit there would be what? Like, how do you calculate that theoretical limit? Um it's going to be based on the accuracy of how you're reading the markers, right? Like what is can you show how me a reading the marker and what's the step of the differential drive so say that uh, let's say theoretically speaking that we we have a stepper motors that are uh, controlling uh, that are controlling the the trails What's the smallest step of this uh, yeah. stepper motor that that's going to determine how accurate it can be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that smallest step could be, I mean, we can say, um, you can probably say one centimeter. Like, yeah, for, pra for practical approximation, I mean, it's continuous, it's really continuous, but because of the mechanics of the tractor, let's say it's, it's uh, say, one centimeter. I think that's fair to say. We should be in a good position because if we have it in, in the range of five meters, uh, we can see multiple poles uh, or multiple markers uh, behind each other, so we can align them all together in one shape and make sure that they're good. Uh, I can see some issues if we have a regular, uh, a regular floor or a regular. Floor. Right, right. Uh, if we have, uh, if we have like uh, uh, a pitch, not, not a pitch, yeah. but at least yeah. a, a yaw angle. If we have uh, a yaw angle, then this is Right. Oh yeah, I see, I see. So the mechanism there is your... Tell me a little bit more about the mechanism there. Yeah, because, yeah, say one side, there's a yaw or a tilt. You can say, say the tractor is tilting to one side. How does that affect your measurements? Uh, that affects my measurements because at, at, at this point, uh, we're not... Even if the poles are perfectly aligned, uh, we're not going to see 
is a perfect one because the camera has an angle from uh, the, the, the straight level uh, position. So we're going to have an error over the end the evening. So we're going to be, uh, the robot will be trying to go uh, left and right, trying to align those markers uh, behind each other, and you will never be able to get that right. Uh huh. So to do so to do that, we need to be sure. Uh, maybe just have a couple of other. I don't know. Ha have a wrist, uh, a wrist manipulator over uh, the camera to make sure that it adjusts uh, this difference in, in the angles. So uh, have the camera mounted over uh, a wrist joint, a wrist joint which is. Uh, a joint that has uh, the degrees of freedom over three angles. You know that, right? Yes. Michelle, you know yes. about that. Uh, I, I, was, <laughs> I was looking at something else. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, okay, so a thing that adjusts for camera angle. So uh, isn't there an open source project like that open source camera holder? Uh, Salam, isn't there an open source project that has that? What you're talking about? Camera uh, stabilizer? Okay, okay, let me show you this because I saw this and, and now it's all coming together. So open source camera stabilizer. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, have, I have it on my website. I will have a look uh, for the link. Yeah, it's a nice project. Uh, it's uh, open sam open sam it's, uh, yeah. It's yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly okay let me show you this open sam okay look at page three Uh, camera stabilizer. Okay, it's on the hip hop. Yeah, yeah. That's what we want to use. So mount the camera. So mount the actual, uh, both the Raspberry Pi and the camera on that little apparatus. Because this one is passive. Sorry. This one is passive, so it would probably allow us to do the same thing with uh, more ease. It should be yes, yes. It would be less control, but we need to, to keep uh, an eye over the readings on the gyroscope of the tractor itself to make sure that we're doing the right adjustments when we're moving. Okay. So, so the camera say is stabilized to perfect horizontal position. So you're reading both the gyroscope and the computer vision? Yes, yes, it's, it's a must. Uh, can you describe that a little bit? So, so, uh, so controls. Um, let's let's write some notes on that. Okay. Uh, what specifically do you want this to? Okay. So, can you summarize the logic sequence of the of how you're what you're doing? To measure and to determine a straight course. Okay. Well. Yeah. Well, I mean, just the basics here. So you're reading. You're looking at markers. You're. Yeah, I'm looking at markers and I'm trying to get them uh, all lined up uh, behind each other. So you look at markers, get them aligned best as you can. Exactly. So if I would, if I would do a sanity check at, at the beginning, I would make sure that uh, the marker is uh, up straight and that I'm having equal distances from both ends of the marker. So I'm having uh, approximately equal number of pixels from both ends of the marker. If not, I'll keep, I'll keep calibrating. 
reach that and then I'll be so close to aligning multiple markers on one side. Sorry, on one line. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So we're taking a picture. Yes. The marker should be just in the middle of that one if we want to uh, align ourselves uh, over a course of plants. That's right. That's right. And once we get that roughly in, uh, in zone, then we can move to the other to the other stage, which is making sure that all of them are aligned. So uh, we we stop doing uh, smoothing filter, and we make sure that everything is in uh, is in place. Okay, where does the gyroscope come in? So you set a threshold like if it's if it's um, what happens if it's above that angle? If it's above that angle, we will not be able to get them along because then we are having a different perspective of the angle of of, uh, of the view. Now, if uh, this is the scenario, if the camera is mounted directly over the track, if the camera is not mounted directly over the track, if it's mounted over this open sound thing. Uh, I need to think of how can we adjust the angles with the with pictures that the camera is taking. Well, I'm thinking here in our case, if the camera is in front of the tractor on the open SAM, then do you care about the angle of the tractor? I don't think it would matter at that point. You don't have to even do that, do you? Okay. Um, well, I think the field is going to be, I don't think it's going to be, so if we're under 5 degrees, we're okay in all cases. Yeah, let's do that. What are our next steps now? Because I, I think I'm pretty good for now. So a picture that shows two of these stakes in front of each other so include Let's let's write a slide on that part. So
Um... Okay, we can change this one here, so... By the way, um, the gyroscope itself can give us a pretty, pretty good uh, stabilization for the orientation uh, on its own. So, uh, if we use the gyroscope data and then we have the tractor, uh, let's say, part at an initial stage and it has a calibration uh, mark that can calibrate its gyroscope well. Uh, then we can get pretty decent, uh, pretty decent movement with that one. So uh, let's say that. So I need to draw this somewhere. Not very familiar with the things that you've drawn over the years. Let me see if I can draw it over paint or over something else and then jump post it over the discussion. Okay. So you want a picture that is like this. Let's see. Share some can I paste a file yeah. over the chat area? Um, or over the document directly? Or? No, only links. What kind of document? You can upload to the wiki. Just click upload on the left hand side of the wiki. You can upload to the wiki. Okay, so look at slide number four. Is that what you want? Take a picture of this area. It's every other row, right? So it will be twice that. 
So oh, every yeah. 1.5 yeah. meter? Yes, yes, the picture of that would, would, uh, would work, but we say that we're having an array of 3 by 3. It's 3 by 2 here, is that okay? Uh, 3 by 3 would be much better. Okay. From what height should I take this picture? Uh, the height at which we need to place the camera. So if we're going about one meter tractor, uh, then, then it makes sense that we're at, I don't know, 80 centimeters? Or just at the, the, the ultimate top one meter? Yeah. So like this, that, this the, is what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah. I can take... Uh, you already said the field, uh, just try to, to uh, wheel around the camera, make sure that you're taking uh, pictures, time and forth, and all these things. Say it so again? Can have some data with, uh, I'm saying that if you already made that setup, uh, it would be very beneficial if you can take uh, multiple shots while wheeling the camera back and forth, uh, left and right. Getting some stored images will help us also with calibration. Yeah. If we do not go the computer vision route, but pre-programmed through GPS, that's easier, right? GPS. Yeah. GPS. Uh, we lose. Uh, we lose this. Very fine accuracy that you have. Yeah, yeah. Because with GPS, at least the one that we have, uh, there's some noise added to them so we don't get the military accuracy that uh, we have. Right. Uh, one funny part is that most of the uh, GPS systems, they are accurate by nature. And there's some noise added to the circuit so that we can really get the accuracy, the real accuracy out of them. So there are some noise that usually added to the GPS circuit so that they don't give uh, the ultimate accuracy that we can, that we're looking for. The noise is added on purpose? Yes, yes. Why is for that? Commercial use, so that? So that they can be sold for commercial use. Oh, I see. So, uh, so they the sell... The military do not pay more for accurate uh, GPS. They, they have the same cost. You're saying that the commercial GPS systems, they're very accurate, but they're without the noise, but riding on the same system? Without the noise? Without the noise, in the, the electronic circuit itself. So upon manufacturing, they do inject uh, some uncertainty, unneeded uncertainty into the uh, circuit so that you don't get the very high accuracy. That, 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 You're that saying that... that uh, are you... For, for a centimeter uh, accuracy or a precision uh, open source GPS receiver. It was a oh. start the project. Okay, put that on the page. Oh, to three centimeter accuracy? Yeah, it's uh, pretty, uh, I think four centimeters in uh, X, uh, Y, and uh, eight centimeters in the Z. Oh, wow. Four meters in uh, X, Y? Four centimeters. Four centimeters in X, Y. Yeah, and eight in Z, in, uh, in height. It's sort of a correction on the GPS signal, uh, I don't... Don't know the technical specs, but and don't know the price. It was for you uh, and UAVs. Hmm. Salam, are you suggesting that the, for example, in our camera, 
on a cell phone, they have the circuits that are that are built with the noise injection. Oh, that's what I've been told. Yeah, so that's what I've been told by some of my professors at the university. Don't worry, that, that should huh. be uh, aware of these things. What bastards! Okay, so we'll take you some pictures. You're okay. going to get a data set. Now... It will be operational by 2020. Oh, really? Okay. Um, Salam, do you also have the capacity to get yourself some 3 quarter inch PVC? Do you guys have 3 quarter inch PVC? Can you get yourself a what piece and take some pictures as well? Oh, uh, what I'm missing is the field. <laughs> the what? The field. So, like, yeah, I can do it over sound. So uh, I believe for the sound is a bit uh, uh, lighter color. So separation would be a bit uh, uh -huh. should, should. Um, Because you're detecting by light intensity? Brightness? Uh, I'm detecting, yes, uh, a combination of RGBs or when I turn them into grayscale. So when I turn them into grayscale, the color of sound will be sampled into uh, the higher uh, the higher side of, uh, of the scale from 0 to 5, just near, near the white. So the, the threshold over there will be uh, pretty tight rather than uh, comparing with green and brown. Uh huh. Okay. But I believe that I can get something worked out. So uh, if you find it hard to do it on your uh, on your end, uh, well, well, the thing is here right now. In order to expose bare ground, which is what's going to happen, we would have to do that. We would have to plow or something, you know, till an area, because right now it would have grass. Is it acceptable on just grass? Okay. Okay. So this should be our worst case scenario. So, yeah, why not? All right. Could do that. Is that would that be the next step to train? You know, get this data sample and then work with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as far as the computer, can you computer software the OpenCV uh, software? Can you send a link to what you're actually using? Like, is it just like one program uploaded <clears throat> to the Raspberry Pi? What are you doing? You're, you're uploading a whole operating system with this OpenCV software, or how, how does that work? Basically, uh, OpenCV is uh, a library uh, which has uh, a group of functions. So you download that one, and then you import it into your program. So at the beginning of the program, you just import OpenCV, and then you start using these. Uh, these functions to deal with pictures. Uh huh. Okay. And the actual software, are you going to write that from scratch? The actual software, I believe that, yes, I'm going to write it from scratch, but it's, it's not going to be that big. I hope that it's not going to be that big. Because we're going to be using helper functions from the uh, library. Finding the right functions is the big what kind of helper functions? Have, because it's an open source thing, you have multiple implementations of, uh, of the same function, let's say, in different ways, in different uh, speeds, uh, accuracies, and so on and so forth. And you need to look which one best fits uh, your application. 
Okay. What kind of functions, for example? Give me an example of a function, like... Yeah, you're saying you're gonna have to hunt down these all these functions. Yeah, so uh, one, one of the points is that uh, uh, you need to think in, in what uh, levels you need to search for your post. So are you going to turn it into a grayscale? Are you going to go for an RGB combination, a certain RGB combination? Are you going for, for a certain HSP combination, which is a new saturation and a value? combination so you need to know which way or which which uh, uh, processing you need to do for the picture okay so that you can get out the useful data out of it okay yeah don't they have some samples where people are detecting things like pvc stakes like can you find something like that uh, i can look for that yeah, yeah. Seems like this kind of there's something very close to this that someone must have done already. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds good. So um, we'll get this to you. Um, I guess in the next few days, if we can. Uh huh. And so, so the the final product will be you upload the libraries, the OpenCV libraries, to the operating system. Um, you install those libraries on your Ardu uh, Raspberry Pi, and then in the program you just call on some of those libraries. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the libraries are so written. First of all, I'm going to be doing the testing not over the hardware, but rather on my PC and Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to make sure that we're getting some, some good results out of that, and then we're going to go with implementing some over hardware. Okay. Sounds good. Um, what else? Anything else to cover right now? I believe that we're good. We're good for now. So, uh, next steps are to get you the data set, and then... Um, So Before the lines are the markers, sorry, uh, I just need to double check uh, uh, on that. So were we going for half a meter or what? Yes. Pass. Right, so the markers, you're asking what they are? What height, yes. What height? What height? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking not half a meter, just small, like uh, 20? 20 centimeters. 20, 30. I mean, as far as sticking out of the ground, they're going to be halfway in the ground, but sticking out, you just need like 20 centimeters, I would say. So I would expect um, maybe 20 centimeters underneath and 20 centimeters above. So yeah, you can say... 20 centimeters, that's, yeah, yeah, about that. So, half a meter, take them to the ground, half a <laughs> that should be fine. Yeah, half, half a meter with halfway stuck into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So that basically they're tall enough, uh, stiff enough that they're not going to be knocked over by anything, they're stiff into the ground. But they're not that tall that the tractor wouldn't clear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they have they actually have to be yeah, I'll see. I think we have like Yeah. Twenty centimeters is on a is on a high side. It might be as little as as ten centimeters. Just to make sure, like say in muddy conditions you don't knock over your your posts, your little posts. Like say it's well the the as you can see in um if you download the tractor uh off the let's see did I put a link on the tractor yes uh, I believe you've sent me the tractor in the conversation so. right that should be in the document here so 
So tractor It's got a low wheelbase, low low height that is Yeah, where is that? Uh, let me see. I'll give you a direct link to that, yeah. Okay, and then the condition is upon the startup of a new day. Uh, when a new day starts, the tractor has to orient itself, but say it's going to be in the middle of the field. So you have to acknowledge that, that you'll be in the middle of the field and you have to orient yourself where you are. But it, will, it should be easy because the tractor should have left off in a good position, straddling a row, so you can continue from that point. Yeah. Okay. So on page one, I put the tractor file that's in FreeCAD, but you'll see how okay. low the low the axles are to the ground, and still without tracks. That file is being worked on right now. It's being updated. Okay. So I think uh, anything else? We have everything for now. Yeah. Yeah. I believe we have uh, all the details. I'll try to uh, reformulate whatever you've written over here so that I can make sure that I've addressed everything and that we've mentioned everything in the presentation. If there's anything that's missing, I'll make sure to add it. Let me just bookmark this button. Okay. Uh, and we should be good. Let me see if I can get the DHC files and get some pictures. But uh, taking pictures on my hand will take till the weekend. Okay. Right. Um, I'm putting this so on Salam log. So let's see. Use your log. That's the first thing. Is log your hours and log your your tasks. Last one you have is on Wednesday, August 16. I'm just putting a link <laughs> to the current working document on your log, so you have it for reference there. Uh, okay. And I'm being plain honest, I haven't really seen this work on this one since that day. Uh, this put me in the chamber. So, yeah, I need to be. Okay. Okay. And um, so you can do, you can begin on some things like, like starting to look at, yeah, review the, 
like can you start on anything at this point like actually starting on a code and getting things ready for that yes 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 okay yes. Yes. yeah I so, can, at least at least i can uh, try to mimic whatever we're getting Excellent, excellent. So anything that you do, just please log it on your log. Like for example, if you start writing the code, you know, it's a, the, the the idea is publish early and often, meaning that as soon as you have anything, just post it so it's at least a placeholder, and then you can upload new versions to it. Just like the working okay. document, it's already up there, but we can add to it. All right. Awesome. Well, awesome. Yeah, and please free to add to this working document in Google presentation. I mean, you start pages there and, and so forth. So you're welcome to edit okay. that. All right. Okay. Well, Salam, thank you very much. So hopefully we get this thing and we build it on October 27th with building the system. So, sorry, say it again. We're going to... Yes, we're building it here. We have a workshop organized at the at our facility here. We're gonna post that workshop in a in like a week, two week to two weeks. We'll post that workshop, and um, yeah, we'll build it then. We're gonna build the small version, which is just the 16 horsepower, as well as the 64 horsepower. Now, as far as the small tractor, basically this GPS. I mean, it's basically gonna be a module add-on to the tractor, tractor, so we can either use that or just use it uh, for normal operation. Yeah. Expensive. Yep. But very accurate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So keep going on the research on those things. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything usable. For now, we can do this computer vision route, which is good for a first prototype, and that's great. So we'll continue doing awesome. this. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.